Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to a new screencast lecture. Today's topic is potential energy. Let's get started. We're going to start with the same pretest question that we used during the kinetic energy lesson. And you should think to yourself, are you going to switch your answer or stick with the same answer that you had before when you did the kinetic energy lesson? Here's the question. A ball is released from at rest at position one. The diagram shows the ball in four positions. There's a rolls down the track from left to right. In which position does the ball have its minimum gravitational potential energy, and which one does it have its maximum kinetic energy? The two general energy types are kinetic and potential. Kinetic and potential energy. Today we're going to focus on potential energy. Here's a clip called Amazing Pendulum Wave Effects. While we're watching this, think about why do some of the pendulums swing faster than the other pendulums. Note that they all have the same size weights attached, so it's not the size of the weight that's attached to the string. Well, that was pretty neat. So now let's think about the question that I asked before the video started. Why do some of the pendulums swing faster than the other pendulum? The answer that we'll find is that the faster swinging pendulums had a shorter string length. The slower swinging pendulums had a longer string length. It had nothing to do with the weight of the mass. Now let's shift gears a little bit here. Let's take a look at this scenario. We have two balls, ball A and ball B. They're on a platform here. Now if we knock both of them off at the same time, which ball, A or B, is going to cause a bigger splash in the buckets of water? Here's a clip to kind of show this in action. Okay, to help us best to answer this question, let's think back to our previous lesson about kinetic energy. There are two variables that determine kinetic energy. Hopefully you can remember them. One of them is the mass of the moving object. The more massive object has more kinetic energy due to its larger mass. Here we see a belly flopper. Its kinetic energy is being transferred to the water and the water is being splashed up. Now take a look at these two divers, the diver on the left versus the diver on the right. Which one do you think is going to hit with a bigger splash? My bet is the one on the right. More mass. Okay, here's a belly flop clip from one of my favorite shows, Impractical Jokers. Now let's think back to, uh, again to our kinetic energy lesson. What is the second variable in kinetic energy? We have the first one, that's mass. The second variable is the speed that the object is traveling. So the greater the speed, the greater the kinetic energy. Now let's think about that falling object scenario. We saw that the heavier or more massive object is going to cause a bigger splash than the lighter object. But we can't forget the effect speed is going to have on the ball. So which ball, ball A or ball B, is going to fall faster? In other words, if I were to push balls A and B off of the platform at exactly the same moment, which ball is going to hit the water first? You may be surprised by the answer. This has been a question that people have been thinking about for a long, long period of time. There's even talk of Galileo uh, dropping two objects off of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. That may or may not be true. However, Galileo did uh, study this phenomenon. Here's a clip that might help us to understand. Now I want you to make a prediction. In my left hand, I have a standard sized basketball, and in my right hand, a five kilogram medicine ball. If I drop them both at exactly the same time, which one will hit the ground first? Ah, this is a trick one, isn't it? The heavy will go down first. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, it'll drop faster. I actually would have thought this one would go faster because it's heavier. heavier. You reckon they'll, this I reckon will be faster? I reckon that one will be faster. So, why does that make it go faster? Because uh, the weight pulls it down quicker. What are we measuring when we say, oh, it's heavier? What are we feeling? Gravity. Gravity. <laughs> it's being pulled to the Earth, I guess. OK, so which of these objects is being more pulled to the Earth? This one. That one, the black one. Oh, they fell at the same time. Exactly the same time. Gravity is going to pull at the same rate, no matter how heavy or how light it is. <laughs> What's the big idea? The big idea is this one has more mass, so it's got more weight, which you can clearly feel. But it's also got more inertia, which means it's also more sluggish. Right. It tends to resist acceleration. So that greater force is required to accelerate it at the same rate as this ball. Like a heavy car trying to accelerate. Like a heavy car trying to accelerate. You need more force to get it going. So were you surprised by the results of that experiment? Now this concept's a little more advanced. Um, as an object falls, its speed is going to increase at a constant acceleration. This is known as the acceleration due to gravity. Here on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second per second, or 9.8 meters per second per second. In other words, every second that uh, an object falls, its speed will increase by 32 feet per second. Here's a clip that shows this idea where the object is going to be traveling faster the longer that it falls. Here you can see it's set up. The uh, background wall is marked off into equidistant lines. Now he's turning on a strobe light and he's going to turn off the room light. And the strobe light is going to flash at a standard rate. I don't, let's just say it flashes once every second. I mean it's flashing much faster than that. But what that's going to do is that's going to take a picture of the ball every second that goes by. So this is an equal amount of time between flashes. So here you can see, and I'm going to rewind this a little bit. Okay, so here you see him holding the ball. At this point, how fast is the ball traveling? How fast is the ball traveling? Well, it's traveling zero meters per second at this point. As he releases the ball, the ball starts to speed up. So every flash is, again, it's not, but let's just say for, to make it easy, is one second. So at this point, it traveled in one second won't travel from here to here. Now it's at this line in the same amount of time it traveled from here to here. That is a longer distance. Now from here to here it traveled and then from here to here and you can see those distances are increasing each flash. It's getting longer and longer. Right here if you remember the first flash was only about that far, the second flash about that far and then it gets longer and longer as it goes by. And here's a composite image of the ball for each flash that it takes. And you can clearly see that the distance that it moves is increasing for each flash. That shows that the ball is going faster. Its speed is increasing as the, ball's, uh, as the ball falls towards the earth. Now another interesting thing is two objects falling. You might think about, well, if I drop a hammer and a feather, the hammer is going to fall faster than the feather. Well, that might be true, and it definitely is true here on Earth, but that is due to air resistance. Now this video clip on the left, this is showing a feather and a ball falling through a vacuum chamber. So they've taken the air out, so it's getting rid of the air resistance, and you'll see that the feather and the ball are falling at the same rate. That's pretty neat. Now let's apply all this to the idea of potential energy. First, let's get a definition of potential energy. Potential energy is going to be defined as the energy stored in an object. So you might think about potential energy, maybe your uh, parent said to you, hey, you have the potential to succeed. What that means is that you have the ability to do it, but you're not necessarily doing it at this moment. There are many types of potential energy. Our first example is chemical energy. Stored or potential chemical energy is defined as the energy stored in chemical bonds. When bonds are broken, they can release energy. Some examples. A battery. That's a really good example of a stored energy. Food. Food is an example of stored chemical energy. You may have heard of the term burning calories. And if something can burn, it has chemical potential energy. A gallon of gasoline has stored energy. When you uh, burn it, it, it breaks chemical bonds and releases a tremendous amount of energy. Another example of potential energy is elastic energy. Elastic energy is defined as the energy stored due to stretching or twisting of an object. Elastic potential energy example, well here's one right here. I have this binder clip 
and when I squeeze it, it now has the potential to do something. It's not doing it yet, but if I release one end, it snaps and creates a pretty loud noise. Twisting or torsion is another example of elastic potential energy. This is called a ballista, and a ballista gets its energy from twisting ropes. And when the twisting ropes are released, it can shoot a projectile. Stretching or tension is another example. So when you just take a rubber band and stretch it, a lot of you may have seen this trick with the uh, rubber bands and a watermelon. It's, I've never done it myself, but that's pretty neat. Slingshots are another example of tension in action. Often people will use potential energy as a synonym for gravitational potential energy. Potential gravitational energy is defined as energy stored due to its position. In other words, an object will be pulled by gravity, causing it to fall and to speed up. Some gravitational potential energy examples, a ball rolling down a hill. A trebuchet. The trebuchet, this part of the basket is heavy and it falls and it makes this part swing in this direction and throw the object. A landslide is an example of gravitational potential energy. Even a tree sitting on a hill, it has potential energy because that hill gives way, that tree's going to go down the hill. You may have heard of a sinkhole. Here's an example of a sinkhole that happened in Chicago. Here's an example of a sinkhole that happened in Tennessee. It happened at a uh, Corvette museum and some really expensive and fancy old cars fell into this sinkhole. Here's a woman who was rescued from a sinkhole. The factors that affect an object's gravitational potential energy is its mass and the height relative to a point of reference. If I increase height, I'm going to increase the gravitational potential energy of the object. Like for example, why does climber A have more potential energy than climber B? Well, climber A has more gravitational potential energy than climber B because A is at a greater height than climber B. You can imagine that if the ropes vanished, don't know why, but let's say they magically vanish, uh, climber A is going to fall, climber B is going to fall, climber A is going to fall farther than climber B and also be able to be uh, falling faster because we already saw that as an object falls, it starts to increase in speed. So if we have two divers, the diver on the top is diving from the high dive and the diver on the bottom is diving from the low dive, the diver uh, from the high dive is going to be hitting and traveling at a much greater speed than the diver from the low dive. So a good rule of thumb is the higher object is going to have more potential energy because as it falls it's going to increase speed and we can put that all together by saying an object that is at a higher level will fall farther and faster than an object at a lower level. Take a look at this chart. The ball has its greatest potential energy at what position? Either A, B, C, D, or E. Which one do you think? Well, the correct answer is position A. Position A is the greatest potential energy because it is at the highest above the ground. The ground in this case is our point of reference. So ball A will fall this far, ball B will only fall this far, ball C will fall this far, Ball J will fall this far, and ball E will not go anywhere because it's already on the ground. Okay, let's take a look at this clip of uh, somebody dropping a basketball off of a very, very high dam. Recently, some friends of mine went to the Gordon Dam in Tasmania, which is 126 and a half meters, or 415 feet high. Then they dropped a basketball over the edge. You can see that the basketball gets pushed around a bit by the breeze, but it lands basically right below where it was dropped. Now watch what happens when they drop Ready? another basketball, but this time with a bit of backspin. Whoa, look at that go! <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I literally just dropped it with a bit of spin, like I didn't even throw it, and it just took off, like we had no idea that was gonna do that. Wow, that was pretty neat. If that's something that catches your attention, do a, do a video search for it, For it's called the Magnus Effect. It's really neat, it's worth your time.
Well, guys, that's all for tonight. So our next lesson, we're going to go over converting potential energy to kinetic energy and vice versa. Hopefully you meet, uh, join us for that. We'll catch you next time. See ya.